Hi, this is Dr. Bertolo Meshko, the medical futurist. In this episode, I want to talk about a very special aspect of artificial intelligence. To understand AI's future role in healthcare, medicine and your lives, you must understand the language it speaks. Yes, it speaks a language and you can master it. When people look back at the first half of the 21st century, they will see a time when AI became omnipresent in our lives. They will see that it was the biggest tectonic shift in the history of our species. But for us, right at the doorstep of this technological revolution, we need to get ready. AI will fundamentally change our lives, our jobs and our healthcare. So if you don't understand how AI works, we will simply lose control. Think about AI as your employee who does a hell of a job, but speaks a foreign language. To remain in control and to communicate with it, you need to understand the language it speaks. So, I set out on a journey to learn it. But it wasn't a programming language, it was the language of chess. The obvious question is, what chess has to do with AI and its language? I think most of us know. What AI algorithms do is that they use data and methods to make better decisions, whether it's the stock market or a self-driving car. But it's the same language that chess masters use to anticipate the opponent's moves. It's the language of anticipation. In similar fashion, AI follows a decision tree that branches according to the next steps that have already been computed and use machine learning to create strategies to oversee the possible steps and outcomes. This same language applies to AI in healthcare and medicine too. Thus, the language of AI is similar to the language of chess. The minds of professional chess players and physicians work in a similar fashion. Chess players have to think many steps ahead of every single move on the board, anticipating the next course of action and ready for most of the outcomes. Physicians are doing the same every day, but on many boards simultaneously. And in their case, a bad move can be the difference between life and death. This is the most challenging and pressing job in the world. But with AI, the language of anticipation meets an unprecedented computing power. And in that way, AI can play thousands of games simultaneously without breaking a sweat, and it's able to anticipate the next moves like nobody or nothing else before. It will be unbeatable in many cognitive tasks and it's time to embrace it. Think of it like this. You are in a labyrinth that has several exit routes, but anytime you are stuck, you can jump high enough to get a bird's eye view over the whole thing through. You will instantly know which route you will have to take next to beat the labyrinth. That's how AI looks at chess, banking, transportation and given enough data, even healthcare. This is the language of anticipation. It's about building decision trees and trying to predict the future. And if we know that that's how AI thinks and that's how it makes decisions, even if we don't understand the level of computing power behind it, we will understand it enough that we won't be like analog clocks in a digital world. It's about finding a platform where you can understand the same language. For me, chess has proven to be the ultimate solution for this. Since 2018, I've been playing two hours every day and meeting twice a week with my trainer, Armin Juhas, an international chess master. In February 2020, I hit the 1000 hour bar of chess time, a personal milestone, which gave me lots of insights into not just the inner workings of algorithms, but my decision-making process as well. Learning the language of anticipation is much easier through learning games than anything else and I would recommend it to everyone to do the same. But in case you don't have a spare thousand hours to learn chess, here is my experience. When I started this project, I had to come to terms with the fact that my existing solution-oriented skills were worth next to nothing in this much more complex realm. The language of anticipation, the language of AI, is much deeper than most people's problem-solving skills. So I had to build new skills from the ground up. I diligently completed over 33,000 tactic exercises on chess.com, take part in tournaments, analyze games from grandmasters. Prior to learning chess, I had a strategic mindset when it came to tackling issues that I would describe as one-dimensional. Here is a problem, these might be obstacles, and there lies a solution. What has changed is that I'm thinking in a 
whole new dimension as well. Now I see decision trees. Whenever I have to tackle a challenge, I see more potential outcomes than ever before. By simply breaking problems down to their tiniest element, I learn to solve problems that used to seem impossible to solve to me. And as I reached those 1000 hours, analyzed multitudes of chess matches from grandmasters and algorithms, I got to learn more than just soft skills. I learned an utmost respect for AI. As I become more acquainted with the so-called AI speak through chess play, it felt more and more like learning a new language. Now I understand more about what they do and how they do it. It also became evident to me that humans can never best AI. My ALU score, which is the official chess rating system, is now around 1500 on chess.com. My trainer's ALU score is around 2400. Keep in mind that a 50-100 ALU difference on his level can be measured in years and even decades. Armin, chess players have an ALU score, which means they are on the same scale. Every professional chess player receives an ALU score, and those who play on chess.com or lichess.com, for example, they also get an ALU-like score on those platforms. By being on the same scale means that all chess players can be compared to each other. Uh, an amateur player who just starts playing chess like on chess.com now, they would have a, what kind of ALU score? Around uh, 9 or uh, 800. All right. My ALU score on chess is around 1550 right now. Yeah. Please reassure me that whatever happens in life, I would beat a player of that 800, 900 level anytime now. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. Um, the next line from here, like between you and me, uh, what, what's your ALU score? It's around 2400. All right then. So here's a challenge. What if you stop playing chess now forever? And I would play for chess, I would play chess for 40 years with the best helpers in the world. Would I be able to beat you 40 years from now? I don't think so, because if you want to become a top player, you need to start it in a very young age. I started at 33. Wasn't that enough? I think it's a little <laughs> bit late. All right. The next line from there, from you, is like Magnus Carlsen, word number one. What is his ALU score? He is almost 2,900. He's something like 2,850. Okay. What if Carson stops playing chess forever now and you play for 40 years with the best helpers in the world? Would you be able to beat him then? Unfortunately, no, because uh, he's so talented, he has some special skills mm. and um, he had a much better team when he was younger, so unfortunately, no. Wow, so we are talking about decades or lifetimes and it would still not be enough to, to reach these next stages. The last stage from Carson to the world's best player, which is, or she is, I mean, Alpha Zero Lila, uh, what, what is her ALU score now? 300, 400 approximately. So it's almost 600 points between Magnus Carson and Lila. Yeah, that's think, a lot. <laughs> do you think Carson would ever be able to beat Lila? No, because I know it's hard to imagine, but uh, even Magnus Carson make mistakes, so um, the computer is going to beat him all the time. So the artificial intelligence is like on an alien level? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, actually, he or she is not making mistakes, so uh, no hmm. chance for the human. Wow. Uh, I, do, I still don't feel like this, is, that this means that we are doomed as humanity. I feel like this is an opportunity for all of us, not just in chess, to learn from AI. Do you think that chess players and chess trainers can also use and leverage the power of AI? Yeah, we need to learn from the computers, we need to analyze our game, and we need to learn some strategies, and then we can be uh, better than other players uh, who is not uh, learning from the computer. So what I learned from this now is that if I keep on learning from you for about four, five hundred years, I will be able to beat Lila eventually. That's a good question. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> now, the world's best chess player has a score of about 2880. And AlphaZero Lila, an AI chess playing algorithm, has an ALO score of around 3400. It's a number that has never been even closely matched by any human. Humans can improve, but algorithms improve exponentially. Beating Lila or an AI is not a matter of computational power of time. It's simply impossible. But to me, this didn't mean that, that humanity is doomed. On the contrary, my appreciation and respect for algorithms and their developers only kept growing. The experience proved to me that our best bet is to understand and embrace AI. For example, when Deep Blue beat Kasparov, we thought it could be the end of chess as we know it. 
But since then, AI algorithms have gifted us with unprecedented help and knowledge. Today, no chess player can work without using these algorithms daily, and no chess trainer can work without them either. Even viewers who watch tournaments enjoy the games more because there is a constant evaluation from algorithms. But they showed us new ways to see the game too. For example, since the birth of chess, it was conventional wisdom that having the upper hand in a chess game revolved around the amount of materials on the board. Basically, we were conditioned to think that if you have two more pawns or a bishop than I do, you have a clear advantage over me. But AlphaZero Lila created a paradigm shift by proving that mobility is in fact more important than materials. This was unprecedented and might even reinvent chess in the 21st century. There's a quote from former chess champion Gary Kasparov that resonates well with my experience with chess. He said that I lost chess, but I survived. And I thought if you can beat them, join them. From now on, we have no choice but to work with machines and make the best algorithms. This is such a true statement and is possibly the most important lesson I learned during my journey. We have to stop thinking about AI as this strange thing that will eventually replace us. Instead, we have to understand it, control it, and use it as a tool and as a guide. Let's just go back to the analogy with the labyrinth. A bird's eye view of every possible step and outcome. An almost instant understanding of how to beat the task at hand. Now imagine this tool in the hands of doctors. I constantly think about the contributions AI can make to the practice of medicine in the coming years by turning conventional wisdom on its head, introducing new approaches in treating and managing conditions. I say it a lot, but they will usher us into the true era of the art of medicine. When the first cars were rolled out, pedestrians had a hard time getting used to them, even though there were only a handful on the streets at the time. And they were speeding with a mind-blowing 20 miles per hour. In the upcoming era of the AI, it will be like crossing a street in Monaco during a Formula One race, or even hiding from flying cars like in the fifth element. And if we don't prepare for it now, we won't even know what hit us. The only time to decide whether you want to stay in control in the future is today. Chess is obviously not the only way of learning anticipation. You can do the same by mastering Go or any two-player game where strategy, decision trees and the opponent's next moves play a major role in winning. Forecasting is also a fun way of learning anticipation, but if you just daydream every day for a few minutes, it's also very helpful. And if you're inspired by my journey and want to give a shot to chess, check out the description below where I share a sort of starter pack on how to start. Cheers!